Hello, it's Randy Rhodes. Here's a clip from our show and go to randyrhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast. Mary had a little man, man, man. The fault. We believe that all men are created equal. To the magnificent mosaic that is America. A radio beacon to radio beacon. I have a dream. Change has come to America. Knock, knock. Who's there? It's a figment of your imagination. Randy Rhodes Show. Turn up your mind. Steve Bannon wants to burn it down. And you will, if you listen to this show, you will learn what he wants to replace it with. He's a nightmare. And he's the chief advisor to the president of the United States now. <clears throat> you know, if people really want to, in the press, uh, would like to call uh, Donald Trump a racist, you might want to stop on that one and just spend a little time on Bannon. Because Bannon has a clear tie to white nationalists. Clear tie. You, well, yeah, he said his venue his, was for the, yeah, the alt-right. Yeah, he's built the- Breitbart as a platform for the alt-right. He is on record saying that. He's on record uh, defining the alt-right. He knows what it is. Um, he is a guy who has, uh, he wants to tear this system down and replace it with a new system. He is, he is a frightening, no, no, no. He is a terrifying man, <laughs> terrifying man. And it, it speaks volumes. That's my new favorite website right there. Right Wing Watch, a project of people for the American way. Holy crap, man. Now, this is so fascinating to me because weren't these weren't these uh, people, weren't the Glenn Becks of the world, the Rush Limbaugh's of the world, weren't these right-wing radio talk show hosts, weren't they advocating like on the 912 thing and the Tea Party and get active and overthrow the government and, you know, and now all of a sudden their fondest wish has come true and they're like, oh my God, he freaking won? Oh, damn. Oh, snap. Sorry, America. Sorry about that. Just trying to make like, you know, a few million dollars for me and my family. And then um, look, it turns into fascism. Damn it. Oh, damn. Even the right wing uh, uh, lunatics on uh, 4chan. And and that is such a these are such psycho websites that I tried to show it to somebody last night who has deep Internet uh, you know, experience. And um, I, I, she couldn't understand it. She just, she, she was like, what is, I said, okay. They post anonymously and it's all meme driven and then you click on a meme that you like and then you get this long thread of, you know, white supremacists, you know. And even they, I have to tell you, um, the B board is like a general board. And then they have the Paul board, board, which is, you know, their politics board. So I was around there last, and they're going, oh my God, he freaking won. I, I mean, I didn't really want him to win. I, I just, how'd that happen? Oh my God, now what? (laughs) But the white supremacists are thrilled. They are just so excited. They are beyond belief. Everyone else is just flipping out. Nobody knows what to say to do. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody knows who to blame. Nobody knows what to stop grieving and stop crying and get the hell up and start looking. Okay, so here, I'm here, right? I'm here. And and I'm the one that, that, that actually tells you things that nobody else will tell you. Like, be careful of the gaming community, okay? Like PlayStation 4 and xbox that all these white supremacists are on these platforms and like in the middle of your game oh i don't know they might just start screaming n-word get out of my country or some you know uh uh, jews you must leave jews (laughs) oh every time i hear them say jew all i can think of is uh this is really sick this should give you the shivers this should give you the chills and i hope to god it does uh, I think of the scene in Schindler's List with the little girl uh, and the trains are leaving and the Jews are loaded, packed onto the trains. And this little girl, she can't be more than six years old, has already been, her mind's been poisoned. She's been radicalized by the psychos that raised her, the good Germans that raised her. And she's just in this little baby voice. She's going, bye bye, Jews, bye bye. Oh, just oof. So we're all black now. We're all Jews now, right? Do we agree on that? Okay, cool. We're all black. We're all Jewish. We're all gay. 
We're all pansexual. I am a black woman and a black journalist. All my black friends out there, all of my, uh, especially my women who did not vote for Trump, white women did, must say, white women did. They voted for the Trump. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but uh, every every other woman's group didn't. Latino women didn't. Black women didn't. Uh, you know, uh, 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 normal women didn't. You know, Jewish women didn't. Uh, but uh, the white women in this country, they need, they, they need you know, I guess they need, uh, you know, Donald Trump to uh, smack them around a little bit or Steve Bannon to push them or rape them or, or something, you know, in order to, because uh, people can't, can't figure out what, what the hell went on there. Uh, but, okay, so, so yesterday I told you, be careful of the gaming community. They are all out there. They're, they march their little Hitler avatars out onto the screen and they'll put a swastika in the middle of the game and they'll start yelling bye-bye Jews and they'll start yelling deportation forces start now and Georgia water and, you know, all, all this really weird, I don't know, all this really weird and, you know, all of a sudden, Pepe! you know, you'll have a meme there, a little frog, a dank, dank meme. Right, I know it's hysterical. They memed their. That's what they were saying on the on the boards yesterday. They were saying, "Oh, I, I can't believe we memed our way into this president. What did we do, idiots?" All right, so now I have a plan. First of all, I notified my entire family, extended family, uh, you know, friends, you name it, uh, that there was, you know, what had happened with news, the fake news. And, you know, most of the people who are not in the gaming community or don't use the Internet as deeply as I do or aren't on the Internet or haven't figured out the Internet except how to click and go, that kind of thing, uh, needed to be told. And I told them because I just kept getting these long, um, well, these short little I'm so afraid messages from family members. You know, I'm so afraid. Oh, my God. Uh, he's got a seat at the head of the table, meaning Bannon. OK, they were just they're, they're terrified. Uh, about the white supremacists, the anti-Semitism, the anti-immigrant, uh, the anti-Muslim, the religious test, you know, all of it. They're just the, the misogyny, everything that he that Trump said he was for, that he ran on, that he he it wasn't a dog whistle. It was a bullhorn. It was a bullhorn ban on all Muslims. I mean, there was no code. Do you know, it was just right out there and the media just let it go. And so I wanted them to know a couple of things. One was about the gaming community. The other was about their Facebook feeds. And I wanted to let them know that Facebook doesn't just, dis, dis, it doesn't um, delineate or, or, or um, it doesn't ID, it doesn't discriminate against fake news versus real news. It, it had absolutely no way for anybody to tell if what they were reading in their Facebook news feed was news or was it generated by the Bannons of the world, by the Jared Kushners of the world. Oh, yes, they're all media people. They all own a piece of the pie. They all own a piece of media. Jared Kushner owns the New York Observer. Breitbart, uh, 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 Steve Bannon is the, the chairman of uh, Breitbart. They're all, they all got their fingers in the media pie. Oh, and Jared Kushner's brother, Josh, he owns a gaming company, Game Development. So this is how all this stuff happened. Now, very few people read about these people or want to know about these people. You're going to know about these people. You're going to read about these people. You're going to understand who's taking a position in, which, in this administration before they ever, ever get sworn in. First of all, what nobody seems to want to tell you is there will be hearings for these uh, cabinet positions. And yes, they have the um, majority, but they also we do we we also have members. So on the Senate on the, on like the Senate uh, Finance Committee, you know we're going to have to approve. You know, like uh, the Treasury Secretary, we're going to have to approve these cabinet positions, right? And so you know, Ron Wyden of Oregon, he's the ranking member on uh, uh, that uh, on that uh, particular. Are you in my computer? I was. I was trying to turn that sound off, but I'm not right now. Okay, thank you. Um, he's on the, the finance committee. Charles Schumer's on the finance committee. Debbie Stabenow's on the finance committee. Maria Cantwell's on finance. All right, Florida's Bill Nelson. He's on finance. Uh, Robert Mendez. I don't know. Isn't he like in jail or something? <laughs> on his way. All right, so scratch that. Uh, you know, I, I, so so we have people too. And so you know what? How's this sound to you? Extreme vetting. 
Yeah. How's that sound to you? I mean, we should become just unbelievable consumers of C-SPAN. I'll tell you when the, the, the hearings are going to occur, and we'll just tune on in. Because I want you to know some of the names that have been bandied around, like um, Senator Sessions, Jeff Sessions, who was a very early supporter of Donald Trump's. You know, I don't know if you know this or not, but here's a little factoid that you're going to really dig. Senator Sessions was appointed, uh, well, he was um, nominated for a federal judicial position by Ronald Reagan. And um, Jeff Sessions, as you might notice, is not a judge, never was a judge. He's a senator from Alabama. And the reason why he wasn't confirmed to the federal judgeship, which people have to be, is because he was found to be excruciatingly racist. He said the KKK was all right with him until he said he found out they smoked pot. <laughs> so cross burnings and uh, wearing swastikas or getting tattoos in the middle of your forehead, uh, that's not a disqualifier for Sessions. Uh, what was was the pot. The pot uh, said, you know, I can't, uh, I can't, uh, I can't be with you anymore. Um, he also, when he, he he also when he was a lawyer, he he would refer to um, other counsel as boy if they were African American. You know this kind of stuff, and that's why Jeff Sessions wasn't confirmed to a federal judgeship. And you know, none of these positions are a lock. None of them. Now, I think if we start to study these people and you start to realize who Jared Kushner is and why Jared Kushner might want and why Donald Trump might want to give Jared Kushner a top secret clearance, I think the hair on the back of your neck will stand up. You know, Jared Kushner's father, Charles Kushner, was a real estate mogul in New Jersey. And, um, you know, uh, he was prosecuted for various crimes like lying, uh, you know, a uh, uh, fraud, things like of this nature. And it's so interesting that when Jared Kushner's father was prosecuted, you'll never guess who the prosecutor was. It was Chris Christie. What? Yes. <laughs> They're building their own little house of cards here inside the White House, I swear to God. Oh, yeah, it was Chris Christie. Chris Christie prosecuted Jared Kushner's father. And Jared Kushner's father finally, uh, you know, saw the charges and pled guilty. He did two years in federal prison. And uh, Jared Kushner was just a young student when his father was put in jail. He was still attending NYU. And uh, his father couldn't sign any documents. So Jared Kushner took over the family business. And uh, by, all, by all accounts, he wasn't very good at it. He bought a big building just down the block from the Trump Tower swear to God. And the damn thing was going into bankruptcy. And he called the guy who held the loan. And the guy who held the loan said, can't do it, Sally, can't do it. He said, I'm a good kid. And he just lost his, his shit. And he was screaming and yelling at this guy. And he, his name was Mac. He started screaming and yelling at him. And he said, you know, I work hard. You have no idea, blah, blah, blah. He goes, I'm not impressed with you. Okay, I'm just not impressed. And uh, he told him, look, I've got a fiduciary responsibility to the shareholders in this building, and uh, you're about to go into default. No, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to forgive the loan. I'm not going to write it down. Nothing. I mean, you know, you got to learn who these people are. It's 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 an amazing thing. And what was uh, uh, Charles Kushner prosecuted on by Chris Christie? Tax evasion, <laughs> false statements about campaign contributions and blackmailing his own brother. Charles Kushner was in business with his brother, Murray. No, it's not funny. It's true. Uh, he was in business with Murray. And Murray, uh, you know, uh, uh, wasn't doing it the way Charles wanted him to do it. And so Charles retaliated against Murray, who was testifying against Charles. Okay, it was brother against brother. This was their own little family civil war. <laughs> you think it's going to be rough at your house at Thanksgiving. So in order to blackmail Murray into shutting up, uh, Jared's dad, Charles, purchased a prostitute and sent the prostitute over to Murray's. And Murray did her, except he was being filmed the whole time. <laughs> and, uh, you know, after Murray took the film to Chris, Christy, eh, he ended up pleading guilty. <laughs> he pleaded guilty to... Um, Oh, I think seven counts 
of uh, tax evasion, making false statements about campaign contributions, and hiring a prostitute to retaliate against his brother-in-law. So he got two years in prison, and Jared was only 24. And he took over the family business. So they were big real estate people in New Jersey. Jared sold everything in New Jersey off, and he decided he was going to buy a big building on, on Fifth Avenue. For those of you who are very Christian, <laughs> the address is 666. I swear to God. It's 666 Fifth Avenue. And it's right down uh, the block from um, the Trump building. Anyway, make a long story short, Jared was trying to get even with, um, you know, for, for his dad. And so he bought the New York Observer and he started to tell uh, his reporters that he wanted dirt. Okay. He wanted dirt on, on, on these various people that he felt were responsible for his father's undoing. And so, you know... Uh, he hired, you know, I mean, the people inside the Observer were told to, uh, there's a guy named Richard Mack. We got to get this guy. I want dirt on this guy. And the reporters, you know, he was telling them stories about, you know, how bad this guy was. And the reporters, the first reporter went and researched the hell out of him. And he couldn't find anything bad. So the first reporter was told by Jared, well, then get somebody else on it. He put somebody else on it, a second reporter. And the second reporter got nowhere. But that wasn't the end of it. One more reporter who did not work for The Observer was hired to look into this Mac dude that that, uh, Jared's got it out for. And that reporter was Vicki Ward. And Vicki Ward wrote this very beautiful, long article telling us everything about the Kushner family. Extreme vetting. Randy Rhodes Air Force. Air 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 Force. Force. RandyRhodes.com. Go to RandyRhodes.com for the whole thing and a podcast. Buy a stinking podcast.